Hey, how's it going? Mike the Manic Geek here, and today I want to get started on a bit of a mod project. If you recall, when I reviewed the Antac P8, one of the primary criticisms I had about this case was the fact that while the front panel was sort of subjectively attractive, it really didn't let the front fans breathe very well. So I want to go ahead and address a modification for this case that introduces more airflow up front, but still keeps the, the case recognizable as an Antac P8. Now, I'm not setting any completion date for this project, as I'm still not entirely sure the overall direction it's going to be going, but I at least want to get started on it with you guys and take apart the front panel, uh, check out its anatomy, see how difficult it is to fully get everything disassembled, and uh, we'll go from there. So without further ado, let's get digging. Alright, so first things first, apologies for a couple of things. One, the echo in this room. Two, the washing machine going on in the background. But anyway, this is the Antec P8 front panel. Uh, it's something that you know we've all seen before, even if you've, uh, especially if you've watched my review. Um, this blocked off faceplate area is what we're gonna be addressing with the mod that I'm going to be performing on this panel. So, a uh, couple things to note here. Uh, one, first I need to remove everything and see what's really going on with the plastic underneath here, especially as it pertains to uh, this area where the Antec logo is housed that lights up in white. This is not how these cables come OEM. Uh, this is another part of the mod that I'm gonna be conducting on this case. Uh, I'm gonna be routing them around the top and side and then terminating all of the front I.O. with some uh, braided extensions, uh, color to be determined. All right, so let's take her apart. All right, so before I go on any further with removing the front I.O., I just wanted to point out the switches that they're using for the power and reset button up front here. So this is the reset switch, and like a mechanical switch on a keyboard, it's got this uh, cap that goes over the top of it, and that's part of what helps retain these switches in place. The other thing is for the reset switch here, you have this fastener that has a sort of uh, washer head built into it. But then you also have the power switch here, which is held in place with these two clamps on either side, and then similarly has a uh, cap uh, for the face of the power button as well. So when you're removing this, you want to be really careful with the way you pry these tabs apart and lift up on the switch because since the little cap is still holding the switch in place, uh, it's gonna make it difficult for you to just pull this out, uh, especially don't pull it out from the cable because there's gonna be enough tension with that, um, with that uh, switch cap on it, plus uh, just sliding this out from these clamps anyway, you will more than likely wind up tearing these cables out if you try it that way. So maybe a small set of pliers gripping this from the side would probably be a better option. Ah, success. And with basically no damage done to the switch. Sweet. All right, so now we should, should, be able to just take all of our I.O. out. Now the other reason I wound up uh, zip tying all these cables together is because of this right here. It makes it really easy to, uh, to remember where everything is supposed to be set up and it just makes it one clean loom for disassembly. So form and function. I also want to point out real quick that the cap for the power switch actually stays retained inside the body of the faceplate. So if you're not seeing anything underneath this when you pull the switch out, that's why. All right, now to take out the fasteners for the faceplate, of which there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I believe I counted that right. Yeah, that's right. So let's do it. And with that, the faceplate just comes right off. Yeah. 
So let's take a look at what we got here so far. We'll start off with the metal face plate itself and holding this, it basically feels like they just took some of the stock metal that you would use for a normal chassis panel otherwise and just sort of, yeah, folded it over and had this little uh, Antac logo uh, lasered into it so that you could have the, uh, the light shining through it. It actually feels about as sturdy as I was expecting this to. This is a really solid piece of metal. I mean, if your case ever wound up not working, you could always just hit someone with this. Now moving over to the front panel itself, we can see that this uh, Antec logo here is actually being held in place with uh, two screws up here. So this light can even be safely removed from the front panel. Uh, but before we, get, before we go ahead and remove that, um, just wanna note how this panel is sort of uh, molded together. So I'm not really sure what this gap is right here. This, this makes literally no sense to me at all. Uh, but basically what we're going to have to do is cut through both the plastic on this and the metal on this so that it all matches up to make a, uh, a more breathable face plate for the fans. Uh, but bear in mind that if you do a mod like this yourself on either this front panel or any other front panel, that you're gonna remove some structural rigidity from this panel by taking out material. So you may get more torsional flex on your face plate if you do this yourself. All right, so let's see if we can't get this uh, Antec LED out. Okay, wasn't, uh, wasn't expecting quite that, but that, uh... So what we have here is basically just a little etched piece of plastic that's uh, mostly translucent uh, with a raised Antac logo in it. And behind that, what we have here is a little three LED lighting strip that's adhered to the inside of the plastic here and that just shines light down through to that Antec logo. So that's kind of an interesting implementation there, but that being said, if you had a really tiny addressable RGB strip that you could replace this with and just run the cabling through here, you effectively have an RGB front panel for the P8 chassis, which Honestly, I kind of feel like that would be the only thing that would really help to really pull together the, the you know, any RGB build that you would put in this case. I'm gonna see if I can do that. Not really sure what would be entailed, but I will do more research on it. And if it's a thing I can do, then I may do that. Yeah. All right, so the one problem that I'm seeing here is trying to get this cable out of the way, because this terminates in a Molex end, yep, that's exactly what I thought was gonna happen. Okay, so guys, because this LED strip is uh, adhered to the plastic here, and because the Molex power cable that powers the lighting is uh, clearly too wide for this opening. Uh, we will have to attempt to remove this LED strip from the inside of the case. So uh, let's see if we can't figure out a way to do that. Aha, and we have success. Uh, so the adhesive they use for this is, uh, is actually pretty damn decent, uh, but very easy to defeat if you just take a pair of tweezers and a hair dryer, something similar to this one, and uh, just apply heat to the LED strip from, I would say about an inch away from it, just to make sure you're not getting anything overly hot or anything like that. So essentially this whole process, I would rate as definitely beginner level. This is really user friendly. It's very simplistically put together, but it's still, up until I got the metal off of the front of this, there really wasn't any uh, tor uh, torsional flex to this front panel. And even without the metal in place, 
it, it wobbles, yeah, but it's not anything that's like a big cause for concern. So this is a pretty durable panel as it is right now. And as we go through the modding process, we'll take a closer look at what removing materials from both of these pieces does to the front panel here. So guys, I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut this video here. Uh, got a little bit longer than I anticipated, but uh, let me know what, uh, down in the comments below what you think about uh, a video series like this and going over extensively how to uh, prepare and modify front panels. Also, if you have any input for the specific kind of cutout or modder's mesh that I should use for this front panel, uh, leave some suggestions down in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about uh, maybe some of the creative choices that I can make when it comes to introducing some more airflow to the front of this panel here. And as always guys, give the video a thumbs up if you like what you saw, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you all next time. Take it easy.